All right, what's going on, everybody out there? It's Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide, the Final Fantasy VI randomizer. And tonight, we've got another Warring Triads matchup for you with Doom's Rage's Flag set. What does Doom Rage's Flag set entail? Well, I'm glad you asked, great viewer. Um, we are basically going to be starting off with just two characters, kicking an old school style here. We need six characters and nine espers to unlock. If we kill uh, one, three, and five dragons, we'll get auto reflect, auto haste, and auto image, respectively, uh, which is what Doom, the statue, has in his second phase. Magic is going to be less with both magic points and a minus 10 magic power to start off the seed, but we do get a buff to sh the strength stat at plus 20. We get more equipability, 50% instead of the standard 33. And shops and chests are also more randomized, which means there are probably better stuff in there. We get more rages and also higher MP costs. We have a set of juicy, juicy weapons as our dead check rewards there, along with a mega elixir and an ice shield. And speaking of ice, we will only be learning ice magic, no fire, no Bert, uh, Merton, no bolt spells, and no ultima as well so we are going to be looking for some big sticks to throw at our uh, opponents here which is always going to be fun um we do have a kefka tower skip as you see on jesus the frog side over there with that uh, green slate uh at uh seven Tennis, yeah. characters and 13 s seven characters or 13 espers rather or uh 12 uh excuse me 21 checks so that's our skip. So I'm guessing if we're going to get a skip, we're probably going to get either character skip or check skip. 13 espers is going to be a lot for us to handle here. And as always with Warring Triads flag sets, the statues are shuffled in their vanilla locations uh, amongst Kefka's Tower. So that'll be interesting. That's what our uh, our peoples will be trying to get for. As in terms of the meta here, Team Valiant won last night uh for the first out of the best of three so narves has an opportunity to clinch his team into the round of four here we're right now in the bracket stage round of eight has an opportunity to head on over into the semi-finals round jesus the frog meanwhile has to keep his team alive with a victory so that is the storyline that we are going to go with here um i'm gonna have your uh uh runners kick us off here in just a second um so team valiant was actually in first place in my division or my group uh during the regular group stage of it so they were six and oh for the paragon group with a uh, 13 out of possible 16 wins 13 no excuse me out of possible let's see 18 wins 13 out of 18 possible wins and uh team ultima uh, did get in with a 3-3 three and three record on margin of victory. So we'll see here if Jesus the Frog can put his team on his back with a Cyan GP Rain and Sketch Vanilla Realm start. So that gives us access to a bunch of interesting things right off the bat. Uh, we can go to Owser's Mansion for some uh, potential grind fights before having to get a uh, boss fight. We can also do the same with Doma Siege. Tell the uh, soldiers, hey... Fight me, bro. Um, or we could head through Cyan's Dream and unlock all of the sword techs for a possible later character here. But it does seem like both of our runners are headed in different directions. Jesus the Frog heading into the Returner's Hideout right away. Meanwhile, Narves is in the World of Balance Narsh here. There are 10 chests in Narsh and 9 in the Returner's Hideout. It will take significantly longer, though, for Narves to loot uh, Narsh here. But he also has access to those shops, which, if you remember, 35% shuffled plus random, which is higher than the standard 20 here. So go give these runners some love as well. Uh, Jesus the Frog on Twitch and Narves underscore four for putting on this great show tonight. Yeah, I've heard uh, the uh, the previous seed was a little bit of a zoomy zoomy one, so we'll see here if we have some challenges for our runners to overcome. Wow, that's a pretty good uh, armor shop there, force shield and snow muffler. You combine the two of those, and your character's basically invincible. 
We do pick up some dried meat, which will be really good if we run into Gao, because that you need for Gao's Velt check there. Jesus the Frog, meanwhile, is already out of Returner's Hideout, so as I mentioned, is going to be quicker out of that town and into looting World of Balance South Figaro. That Fire Rod going to come in real nice. That can be useful on the very first boss of the seed. Remember, we do not have access to Fire Magic otherwise, so that Fire Rod cracking that for a defense ignoring maximum damage Fire 2 spell. And we know that we have Realm, who, uh, although has minus 10 magic power, is still pretty good with magic. And there is an Ice Shield for sale. 37k. Lots of good shields in that shop. Jeez, the defensive shops are hitting pretty heavy so far in this seed. And remember, we can learn Ice 2 as a spell in this seed. Um, so that Ice Shield becomes even more valuable there. Also, uh, Drinks Glue points out in the chat, there was a lot of good relics in that shop. Atlas Armlet uh, among offensive boosting relics. And remember, we're going to get uh, lots of weapons from the dead checks in this seed. So chances are we're going to be using the Fight Command more often than not. So always nice to find yourself some Atlas Armlets in a shop early on. They will increase your physical damage by 25%, which is really nice to find. <laughs> And let's see if Jesus the Frog decides to take off the Moogle Charm down here while looting the basement or just head straight on through to the other side. And if you know that reference, you're just as old as I am. <laughs> yeah, so as we mentioned, how in the heck did we get here? Let's see if I could pull this off. Uh, sort of. Okay. This is close enough while people are, uh, are looting stuff. You can still kind of see what the heck's going on a little bit here. Um, there we go. That's much better. So, Team, uh, Team Valiant, 6-0 in the Paragon group, uh, with a 1 hour and 37 margin of victory with 13 individual wins going up against team ultima there from the onslaught group group second place just barely eking out team medio with a three and three nine individual wins but having that one minute and 11 second margin of victory so it matters where our uh, our runners were placing here so that is the matchup that we've got so far and that is sort of how we've gotten to this part of uh, the Warring Triads event. I hope everybody's been enjoying all of the content from it. I sure have enjoyed watching it here. And uh, it looks like Jesus the Frog going to be stripping down naked. I don't know. This is this is a PG-13, Jesus the Frog. I don't, I don't know what you're doing there. Usually when that happens, it's for a Coliseum play. Uh, <laughs> so maybe he's going to leverage a Coliseum play very shortly. 63k for that glowing stone. Yick. That is a lot of cash money for that to Zen Thief. Maybe it's cheaper in the world of Ruin, but however, I would much rather spend my 60k on that experience egg there in the Relic Shop. Huge find for Jesus the Frog there, looking around in the shops. So the question is, now that you've seen all of the juicy goods in the armor shops and more importantly that experience egg in the relic shop we are gonna have to make some cash money somehow so there's two ways to do that in worlds collide the first way is to loot and sell some stuff the second way is to fight some enemies and hope you get ones that drop you a lot of gp so we'll see which one of these tactics our runners take in order to go ahead and fund our war machine for those experience eggs and that defensive gear that we mentioned earlier. These are the frog into World of Ruin, South Figaro. You can loot the treasure chests on the outside of town. The ones in the basement will already have been looted since he did it in the World of Balance. But this is a great opportunity to check another relic shop. And there's some earrings uh, just in case we find some good magic at some point in the seed. Even though we do have minus 10 magic power, you still can use magic, you know, relatively uh, well early on because it is way more powerful than physical attacks. We did find the ice shields for sale in the world of Balance South Figaro, but I think 
I would pour most of my resources into getting at least one experience egg, if not two. I do like Cyan's nice little powder blue outfit that he's got in this color palette with the matching uh, uh, scrunchie in the back. Jesus the Frog, meanwhile, emptying out all of his money onto items. And yeah, we do need those consumables, but remember, he has seen the 60,000 experience egg in World of Balance to Zen, and Narv so far has not found that as he heads over to the World of Ruin South Figaro before hitting up to Zen. So we'll see exactly uh, what we want to do here. And it looks like we're taking off the Moogle Charm for some grind fights. Or Jesus the Frog, Realm has Sketch, and Cyan had something so bad I don't even remember what it was. But there you see with the Hyper Wrist, 105 Vigor for Cyan. So that's that plus 20 strength. And then the Hyper Wrist gives plus 50% strength. Oh, he's got GP Rain. Okay, actually that's not that bad. Yeah, people in the chat, what is your favorite color palette? I, I really like um, Strago and Edgar in the uh, uh, Goddesses flag set, but I also like Gogo in basically all of them. I think the blue for Doom is my favorite, um, and I'm bi a little biased there. Is here comes nice heads up play from Jesus the Frog using Sketch here on this. GT Behemoth, Great Behemoth, Giant Behemoth, uh, Gertie Behemoth? I don't know. What does GT stand for? Gran Turismo Behemoth? Who the heck knows? So nice heads up play there in order to sketch some Meteor and already up to level 7 just from one battle. Jesus the Frog is, so that's nice to see. And both of them are heading right up to the Colosseum here. So we're going to see exactly what goodies we may be able to uh, grab out of here. Uh, nothing so far. Atlas Armlet, we've already seen those for sale. Dragoon Boots could be interesting, but this fight is gonna... Woof. Oh. Well, Cyan finna die here. Say say bye-bye to Cyan. <laughs> it's nice knowing you. Let's see if Narves has got any other thing that uh, we didn't see on the other side. Tempest Magus Rod for Atlas Armlet. Eh. I know that Realm could use that, um, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, I didn't realize that Coliseum AI did GP Rain. Thanks for wasting my money, Coliseum AI. <laughs> Although, that is the best way to get through some of those, those grind fights early on. GP Rain um, does uh, basically 30 times your... Uh, Wow, what is... Did he just run into... We have an accidental Kefka in the sky sighting here. All right, so Jesus the Frog is going to pick up a... Uh, <laughs> going to pick up maybe an Esper for uh, something that I don't think Narvs is going to get to because we do not have Setzer to do the search the sky spot. And Kefka goes down like a paper tiger there with GP Rain. GP Rain is great early on. Because it ignores defense and it's a steady source of damage. And the animation is really fast. That is an Esper on the board there for Jesus the Frog. One that Narvs is not likely to get unless we see Setzer further on down the line. And unfortunately that means we got to be stuck with the... Uh, the pixelated screen, and for five grand, that's to Zen Thief. So two quick espers there for Jesus the Frog. Rage Rings and Blizzard Orbs for sale in this Relic Shop. So even though in the vanilla game it's only Yeti that could wear these two items, the Blizzard Orb gives you uh, Ice Absorption and Fire Resistance, and then the Rage Ring gives you Fire Absorption and Lightning Resistance. So these are pretty good relics to have for defensive purposes. The Rage Ring also gives you plus 5 strength, and the Blizzard Orb gives you plus 5 magic power. So just in case you can't find earrings, or maybe you can't find an Atlas Armlet, those relics, if your party can equip them, because remember there's only a 33% chance that they can, uh, are definitely well worth buying there. Oh, Atma Weapon for sale. 
We'll have to come back later for that for uh, Cyan. So we now know on Jesus the Frog's side what Cyan can do. And he especially knows where those experience eggs are. So pair that experience egg with that Atma weapon later. And we've got an endgame build for Cyan already. Meanwhile, Narves is into Owser's Mansion here, which is one of Realm's checks. There's an opportunity to do at least two forced encounters you could do up to seven i think between the grabby painting and all the drop down chests maybe eight because of the nightshade painting in the other room as well um so yeah we're gonna focus on narv's screen because otherwise i'm gonna have an aneurysm uh looking at jesus the frog screen interesting thing to note is we did actually tone down the uh the poison pixelation but i think the combination of the uh, restream quality and the poison is just, it's, it's no bueno here, folks. And it looks like Jesus the Frog opting for the same uh, heading into Owser's Mansion as well. Let's see, Ice 3 plus that 100% HP bonus on that Esper, uh, was that the Tizen Thief one? I wasn't quite sure. I think that was the Zen Thief one, because Carbuncle was the one from the sky. Unfortunately, not much to write home about here. 11 magic power for Cyan. Oh, God. <laughs> that is horrifically bad. Oh, boy. This is a fight here. Yeah, those Enoch Fortis, this is a Kefka Tower mob. Those Enox will cast Brain Blast, which will muddle your party. Oh, wow, getting the Shrapnel sketch there. Unfortunately, still not at great levels, and that is going to be a wipe there for Narvs, unfortunately, for him. So interesting thing to note is even though Narvs doesn't have any checks under their belt and Jesus the Frog has two, his enemies are still at uh, level three because that is the minimum level in this game. Jesus the Frog, I think he's getting caught by the grabby painting on purpose here. And we'll see what he gets. Oh, this is another nasty fight. That uh, Sky Base likes to use Blaster as a counterattack, so... We'll see. It looks like Jesus the Frog is saying no thank you to this fight. Oh god, level 5 Doom. Woo! <laughs> yeah, get the heck out of this fight. Alright, Narv's gonna do some grinding outside of the Dome of Siege, it looks like. You can grind inside the Dome of Siege, but as I mentioned earlier, um, it's a little bit more risky. Because if you do wipe to the boss, then you negate all of the grinding that you did earlier. This, however, is a great fight because there's two undead, enemy, undead enemies. I can't speak. Who made this person a commentator? Um, <laughs> two undead enemies and then Behemoth is great for a sketch because can cast Meteor, basically. Jesus the Frog finding out that Enoch and Fortis is not all that is cracked up to be either. So we'll see if he gets through this. Does have that GP rain advantage. GP rain is damage based on your level. So it basically does uh, 30 times your level times two, I think. Um, and then it splits the damage amongst all the targets there. So at level whatever Jesus the Frog is, right? It's decent damage. Level 8 already for Narv, so that shows you the power of just taking off the Moogle Charm sometimes and taking just one grind fight. Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog up to level 14. We're going to finally find out what's at the end of Bowser's Mansion here. And we also find out that it's not a character at Doma Siege either. Otherwise, they'd ask to join the party here. And Oh god, it's Magimaster. Well... Uh, so this is a thing here. So what Jesus the Frog can try and do is use this Fire Rod first turn and then try and DPS Magimaster down with GP Rain. Meanwhile, Narves also has a bit of a problem on his hands with uh, the Three Stooges here. The worst part about this fight is that you get attacked three times and you only have two characters. 
and they will counterattack everything with their elemental uh, abilities that they've got. Jesus the Frog, meanwhile, trying to heal up his Cyan as much as possible because Cyan is going to be the only way that Jesus the Frog wins this fight here. Can he get through this? Ooh, he's going to pick up Realm, and I think that's a mistake. Maybe not. There goes the GP Rain, and down goes Magi Master. Nicely done. And for Narves, Cyan is slow. We already knew that, but even extra slow now. And Realm was stoned. Who gave the little girl some marijuana? But we're coming back, and that is an Atma Weapon reward from Bowser's Mansion. So no need to go buy one for Jesus the Frog there at uh, World of Ruin to Zen. Glowing Stones are available at the auction house, so that's great. 411 for Jesus the Frog for later on. If he needs to get one more Esper for Go Mode, perhaps he comes back to the auction house here. Chatty is saying that Magic Master caught taking a bribe and he's out of there. Narves decides to use his Fire Rod on Larry and Moe, which is really smart because Curly would just absorb it like a ShamWow there. And oh, goodness. I think this will probably do it for Mo, but we just got to survive the counter and Cyan does not survive. So both Jesus the Frog and Narves barely scraping by their prospective fights. But having gotten through both of them, they are going to get rewarded. Phantom is the Esper there for Narves. So first shiny stone on the board for him. Strength plus one as if we needed even more power in this seed in terms of strength stat. Uh, Vanish is an interesting spell perhaps for uh, for tier one of kefka and muddle is good for katana soul and red dragon and maybe dataluma although dataluma is not really all that big of a deal um <laughs> so not a great esper uh for spells but for utility absolutely phantom is calmness protection if you don't have any other better idea and uh strength plus one will be nice Meanwhile, Garm and Commando. This is a great fight for GP Rain again because they have really high physical defense here. But Narves is just going to get the heck out of here. Uses the Frog, meanwhile, into World of Balance Moblas. This is not a place you often see unless you're maybe in Goddess's Flag set where you can help the injured lad for auto haste and auto shell. But he's looking for some sort of relic or some sort of edge in this fight here. That is a Merchant Sprite, meanwhile, for Narves over at Esper Mountain, so this will not be a character, and also will not be any XP, because this is Ultros 4 here, with Ultros saving some room for Chupon in the back. And I have to wonder what Narves is planning on doing for his offense this seed. We have an idea of what Jesus the Frog will do for Cyan eventually, but... The question is, what is Narves planning on doing? Because regular attacking with Realm might get past the first few bosses, especially if they're pretty easy like uh, Ultra's Chupon, but we need answers for some of those harder ones. Uh, we have not checked the airship shop yet. I'm not quite sure what our runners would be looking for, though. All right, it is Shote the Esper at Esper Mountain, aptly enough. And that one has magic power plus two, so that's a nice one to have early on in the seed for Narves. And it looks like Jesus the Frog is going to pick up that one as well. So, chat, let's, uh, let's get a prediction out here. So, we've seen a bunch of checks. We have to figure out uh, where is our third character. So I'll give you some options, and you can bet some channel points on it. I think these are our three options. Yeah, we've seen everything else. Alright, so chat, I've just started a prediction up for two minutes. You can use your channel points in order to predict where a third character is. Kefka at Narsh, Cyan's Dream, or Mount Zozo. You could bet as many channel points on as many different options as you'd like. And after two minutes, we'll figure out exactly where our third character is. 
You can also tell me who you think the third character is going to be as well. All right, Narvs is taking his uh, looting over to Thamasa. So you can grab some chests here as well as some pretty quick shopping. We'll see if there's anything in any of these shops that is worth taking a note of. All right, shout for no, uh, for Jesus the Frog, rather. Chat is going heavy on the Kefka at Norse prediction. You are evil. Because <laughs> Kefka at Norse means that our characters are going to have to 1v1 whatever's there. And Narvs accidentally flies into Kefka in the sky as well. Okay. So Jesus the Frog is not going to be the only one with Carbuncle. <laughs> wow. That's insane. Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog, uh, walking up to the soldiers to see what the encounters are. I would imagine if these were better than... Oh no, is this a wipe? Okay, whew! Those little crabs can counter with uh, Petrify. And if both of his characters would petri be Petrified, then that'd be a, a GG. So, maybe Jesus the Frog is thinking, Hey, uh, I, maybe I shouldn't uh, try to... Uh, <laughs> fight this fight, but he's going back to the well. Those PM stalkers are easy enough to kill. I just worry about the, the hermit crabs with the counter. Alright, so Narvs takes out his Kefka in the sky, and with this, he is going to uh, head over to the Colosseum to see if he's picked up something along the way that might be valuable to flip one man's trash into another man's treasure. Alright, so here we go. Cyan's Dream. Not the Colosseum. This makes way more sense than going back into the Colosseum a second time. The, the, the Doma Castle and the Colosseum, they have the same sprite on the overworld. <laughs> also, I don't know what I'm talking about most of the time. So, I'm glad that everybody is here with me tonight. <laughs> Hope you're enjoying yourselves for sure. All right, so Narvs is going to go ahead and pick up both of the little kids here and fight a random boss at the Stooges spot. Juxtaposing Jesus the Frog fighting the Stooges at Doma's spot. Is this going to be leader? No, it's not. We did not have a straight-up trade. And unfortunately, this is not a fun fight either. If for Chiva with this, uh, this bad MP and... We do know where some ice shields are. Jesus the Frog knows where an Ice 3 Esper is, because that was um, in one of the checks that he did. Narvs, however, does not have that Esper. I believe that was from the Magimaster fight. Uh, no, that was an Atma weapon. Where the heck did we find that Ice 3 Esper? Mm. Must be at Doma Siege. Or maybe it was Shote that teaches Ice 3? I don't quite recall. However, Narvs gets through that Ifrit Shiva fight with GP Rain and gets Bahamut. Which is a decent Esper to summon. And by decent, I mean really, really good. <laughs> but unfortunately, um, no multi-summon in this seed. Phantom is the Esper from Doma Siege, not Shote. So where the heck did Jesus the Frog pick up Shote? Oh, hey, look, it's Mog. <laughs> so there is our third character is Mog. So we're going to go ahead and end this prediction. We may have characters at Mount Sozo and Kefka at Narsh, but our first, our first uh, third character here at Cyan's Dream number two. And somebody just got a boatload of channel points. <laughs> So 
So very nicely done. PB and J, please, not only winning the last race, but also winning the prediction. What a guy. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is Pugs for Jesus the Frog here in the uh, Narsh weapon or the Narsh monster in a box. I could, I could words. This Ice 3, unfortunately, is going to proc a lot of counterattacks from uh, these Pugs. And oh, no! Level question Pearl! <laughs> Dear Lord. Yeah, GP Rain, a much better option here. All right, well, Jesus the Frog is going to have to hope that Realm survives this or it kills all of the Pugs, and it looks like he's choosing the latter. And this is a 1 8th chance for each Pug to drop a Minerva. So we'll see if he gets any of them here. He does get 20 magic points, and he's got two Minervas! Wow! Very nicely done. Okay, so we know that there is a Moogle of some sort here in Cyan's Dream. And Jesus the Frog is going to head over to uh, Mount Zozo. What's even better is that Cyan can equip that Atma weapon, or rather can equip that Minerva with the Atma weapon. So that is going to help out a whole heck of a lot here. Buying up the Rustrid. So, Jesus the Frog has builds for both his Cyan, that's the Atma weapon, and for Realm, Ice 3. And we've got to see what Narves is going to do with his two characters, because I think right now... The plan is just hold A, and that's going to work for a little while, but he's going to need something to deal with the bosses later on in the game, and oh no. It's Big Bad Chad. Let's see if Jesus the Frog takes on the dragon. Remember, one dragon gets you auto-reflect. Which is sort of an interesting conundrum, right? Because that means that you can't target yourself with spells. They'll just bounce off of you. However, it's really nice in some of the fights that are later on in the seed when they use spells that you could just reflect off of. And it's great for the Doom fight because you could just bounce a spell off of yourself when Doom is in his second phase where he gets the reflect status. So that's one answer to Doom later on in the seed. Looking forward. It looks like Narves is going to do Bahamut with Realm. That's a good idea because that does a lot of damage, Bill Swift. Meanwhile, Dirk Durgan for Jesus the Frog, so he decides that one dragon is enough. And Narv's just throwing money at the problem right now. Same with Jesus the Frog, and I don't blame you. Like I said, GP Rain putting in work here. And that is going to be Mog as our third character with tools. So that's a decent uh, ability to have. We'll get you through the early and mid game somewhat if you have a drill or a chainsaw. I know we saw an air anchor for sale somewhere if we want instant death later on. Let's see what's at the end of Mount Zozo. Drum roll, please. It is a shiny stone. And on the throne, it's another shiny stone, Shiva. So defeat Shiva in Cyan's Dream 1. Get Shiva in Cyan's Dream number three. I think that that checks out. All right, so Narves. Let's see if he decides to lean into the Mog checks or if he wants to go to, uh, you know, maybe go back to Owser's Mansion and Mount Zozo area. And it looks like the answer for him is going to be Narsh. And that is Golem. So there's our Calmness Protection at Mount Zozo. No need to lean back on Phantom for Jesus the Frog. However, his last spot that he's got left is Cyan's Dream. And he's going to come out of there with uh, two Espers and a Mog. So even though Narves is uh, 
you know, I would say doesn't have his offense sorted out as much as Jesus the Frog does now. Having access to that mob earlier means a slight advantage here for, for Narvs. I also don't know if Jesus the Frog ever went back to buy that experience egg in World of uh, World of Balance to Zen. I don't think so because the levels of the characters are pretty pretty relative to one another. One is 21 and one is 22. Could really leverage that experience egg, especially if we're going to be using Cyan for Atma weapon later. Alright, so Mog opens up two different checks, Lone Wolf and Moogle Defense, but he also opens up uh, a lifeline to Kefgat Narsh. So we'll see if Narvs goes up there as well. So we could, we are getting our Kefgat Narsh check for the people in the chat that did predict that, you evil, evil doers, you. Meanwhile, I think Life 3 was on the last Esper from uh, Cyan's Dream, Shiva. So that's nice to see. And, uh... Use the frog as Ice 3, so this Ifrit Shiva fight is no problem for him. Much, much faster dealing with that than Narv's was. And we are rescuing a Moogle here at Moogle Defense. Duh, Schwanz. But actually, this means that <laughs> this is going to be an Esper and item here and not a character. So, chat, let's get a quick prediction in. Let's do another one. Let's give you guys two minutes on the clock here for Kefka and Arsh and Lone Wolf. Uh, oh. Uh, no, I don't want a third outcome. I want two outcomes. Let's start our prediction. So, you could predict using as many channel points as you want on either option. Kefka and Arsh or Lone Wolf. That's where our fourth character must be. So, for those of you that voted for Kefka and Arsh before and lost some money, <laughs> here's a chance to make it up with another Kefka and Arsh bid. Meanwhile, it is the time waste that is Narapa here at, uh, at, where are we? Moogle Defense, that's right. And unfortunately, we don't get to keep Koopop. So that's not actually our fourth character chat. <laughs> Just in case you were trying to get a uh, a loophole here somehow. All right, one Bahamut's gonna do it. Let's see what the reward is here for Narvs. All right, that's another Esper. So very quickly, we are getting up towards our goals. 35 minutes in. However, we're still light on characters. So that's what's making these fights take a little bit longer. Oh boy. X-Zone, Ice 3, Magic Power plus 2, Life and Warp. That is an S-tier Esper right there. I also noticed that Narz only has one Phoenix down left. So he better rectify that situation pretty fast. Alright, last chance to get in your prediction with your channel points. We have 20 seconds left. In the prediction and by that time we will definitely see you got to go activate lone wolf narves we've all done it <laughs> it's a good thing that he recognized that he didn't do it now at the bottom of north narsh before going up to the top meanwhile jesus the frog fighting chad here gonna get his mog All right, so there's the power of the Reflect status, right? Normally, these counterattacks can be pretty brutal, but reflecting them, and ooh, there is Strago in the Yeti cave. So I know we have a few Yeti enthusiasts in the chat. So if Yeti is at either Kefkat, Narsh, or Lone Wolf, we can also go get our Strago right away. All 
All right, the suspense is killing me, chat. What is at the top of Kefka at Narsh? Or rather, the top of Narsh. All right, there is our character at Kefka at Narsh. Let's see if it's also at Lone Wolf. Because if it is, then I could delete the prediction. I mean, I guess we could say that Kefka at Narsh won because that was the first one we saw, right? I don't know. What do we think? Let's Well, let's first see what's at Lone Wolf. This could all be a moot point. Oh, the suspense is killing me. Come on, Narvs. Show us the money. Hey, and it sets her up there, too. All right, so what do we do with this prediction? What do we do? Do we choose outcome? It's got to be one or the other. I think we're going to choose Kefka at Narsh because uh, that was the first one we saw. So congratulations, Kefka at Narsh people. You're welcome for the channel points. That was for me dunking on you earlier. <laughs> and it is Dancing Setzer. And then we do get Terra at Kefka at Narsh. Alright, so that's Esper number 7 there for Jesus the Frog. Uh, note if you pick that chest up during the cutscene, or rather before you finish this check, you're going to have to watch a cutscene. So make sure you grab that chest on the way out and not on the way in. Yeah, so Kefka at Norsh might not be required depending upon what is at the Colin Janin or Daryl's Tomb. But if Colin Janin and Daryl's Tomb are both not characters, then we know that this is yet a, another required Kefka at Norse Doom Seed, which we all love, right, chat? Love it. The Grabby Bear, taking care of that with a little sketch action. There's some GP. So Narv's realizing that this fight is very lucrative, is going to go ahead and do it again. Because basically, this bear will steal money from you, and then when you kill it, you're supposed to get your money back. But with the way that Worlds Collide works is that there is a multiplier on as much GP as you get back. And there it is, 65k for that fight. If only Narvs knew where the experience eggs were. Yik, this is an interesting fight here. Thankfully, it's all undead enemies, so we can just literally uh, use our Revivify. And he's only got one of them, and I think Narvs only has one Phoenix down too. All right, Jesus the Frog, seeing that we do have a Moogle at Moogle Defense, how appropriate. But this also means that his character's got to be up at the top of Norsh. Yeah, this fight's taking a little longer than uh, Narvs probably would have liked there. But is getting some XP, and now he's got three revivifies for the next fight here. So this one will last a lot shorter. Let's see if Jesus the Frog wants to see what some of these wolves are, and it looks like he is going to take a peek, he's going to take a bite. And they are Chaser. This is not a fun fight. Because I believe that this enemy will turn into like three more enemies. So this fight just takes a while. Yeah, this is the one that turns into three more enemies. Very annoying. This is a speed run we're doing here, game. Come on now. Let us just move along. Oh no. Rut row. Oh no! Triple kill! From the trappers. Oh man. <laughs> you hate to see it happen, folks. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, so we got six Phoenix Downs left over after that. Thank goodness. Yeah, the, that fight with the Chaser, I just... Even before the level 5 Doom stuff, I just say no thanks. This fight just takes way too long. All right, finally, Narvs is through all of the minions from Kefka. And it looks like he's going to take on the boss here. 
And it's a pretty easy one. However, I think... Well, I think Narvs is using the Atma weapon in, with Cyan. Yeah, there we go. So we do have, you know, targetable damage for most of our offense here, except for Mog using that, uh, that Flash. And unfortunately, Narapa says, right back at your realm... All right, so that is Welk down for Narv, so he will be getting Kefka. I mean, not Kefka. The other one, Terra. That one. <laughs> I swear I've played this game before. I know the difference between the main bad guy and the main good guy. Or, I should say, one of the main good guys. All right, so Terra and Setzer coming into the party there. And that makes sense. Terra has Rage, so has some pretty decent Rages there. Unfortunately, no, uh, no Stray Cat. I don't know what Setzer has. Oh, Dance, that's right. Yeah, so Overswarm pointing out in the chat, the, the fact that Terra has Rage means that Terra cannot equip that Atma weapon. So one of the bug fixes that we did in Worlds Collide is if you, when you try to equip an Atma weapon on a Rage user, that special Atma weapon animation actually corrupts some of the memory um, when using the Rage command. So in order to get around the fact that your game may crash if you use Rage with an Atma weapon, uh, we decided to make sure that a Rage user cannot use an Atma weapon. The only loophole in this is if Gogo uh, picks Rage as part of their battle menu, you can get around that, and your game still may crash, so don't do that. <laughs> Alright, so Narves is going to head up to Welk here immediately. Makes sense, since we're still in Narsh. And let's see. It's a Narsh guard, so this is not a character here. It is, however, MC Hammer Pants, Daddy Luma. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> no, no, no! <laughs> oh no! <sighs> Could you imagine, like, Mog doing the Noise Blaster once again on the party to, to muddle everybody a second time? Oh jeez. Yo, Realm, stop helping the boss. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> Alright, so Jesus the Frog picking up Setzer. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dataluma calling up the goons. And Terra just keels over and dies from that poison damage. Yeah, Stone is, is one of my worst nightmares. <laughs> because it could, it could basically just end you real fast. Terra, unfortunately, going to be taking a nap for that Dataluma fight. And we do get another Esper Crusader. Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog going to go ahead and do the Kefgat Norse sequence in order to fight this boss here for Terra. So we do know where Strago is, but we don't know where Umaro is. So Umaro would get us to Strago. Alright, so it looks like Narvs is going to keep Setzer on the bench for now. This makes sense. We don't really have anything for Setzer to do. Terra, at the very least, can learn Ice Magic, and same with Mog. 
And we've got our Cyan rocking the Atma weapon. All right, heading over to the Colon Janin. So this is a free Setzer check here. Ooh, it looks like Setzer could actually use the Atma weapon as well. So Jesus the Frog has a pair of lightsaber users. And that is Locke in the Colon Janin with Natural Magic Lore. So there is our sixth character for Narves. He just needs to find two more espers. And that is Welk down for Jesus the Frog here. I think he'll be slightly disappointed that Terra can't use the Atma weapon due to the Rage command. But it doesn't matter because she's going right in the party anyway. All right, let's see where Narvs decides to go here. And it looks like we're going to do the lock uh, Norse weapon shop check. This makes sense. It can only be an Esper or an item. And while we're here, we can also go and grab that Mega Elixir that we ch didn't choose at Moln Wolf from the uh, Moogle Mines, but I doubt our runners are going to be going to do that. Another stone with Ifrit, and Nars has taken a couple of free checks here between the uh, Kolingen Inn and the Narsh Weapon Shop. His levels are really low. They're mid-20s, and he's one Esper away from Go Mode. Contrast that with Jesus the Frog, who has slightly higher levels, but not that much higher. Still has to fight this boss here, though. Is going to get Esper number 9 out of this. Nard's electing to do the South Figaro Cave, so this is one of Locke's checks. It's very fast. And you could heal before the check, so this makes a lot of sense for this play at this point in the seed. By the way, if you're enjoying what you're watching, make sure you give the runners a follow here. Uh, Alright, so we already know where Magic Master is, so when I saw the sprite I was not all that worried. <laughs> but it is number 24 nonetheless. Alright, looking down the rage list for Terra, and it looks like Brontor, which uh, I think Narvs fought, and there's Prussian for Landslide, Carcass for Bolt 3, GT Behemoth for uh, Meteor. So we got some pretty decent rages in that list there. Especially ways to access both lightning and fire magic, which we don't have access to normally. So, could be interesting and it could get some better utility out of Rage Terra. Although, like I said, it would have been better to have her with an Atma weapon than a Rage. But, nonetheless, that is go mode for Narves here at 50 minutes and 25 seconds. However, he is only at level 27 or so. That is not going to be uh, high enough to take on the final boss of the game. So, this becomes real interesting at this point in the seed. If I think if I were Narves, what I would do is I would go clear out the middle path of Kefka's Tower with my entire party. So that would be the Inferno boss, that first dragon, the Guardian boss, and then whatever statues at the Poltergeist spot... Clear that all out, warp out, and then try and go for skip with either 7 characters or 21 checks. How many checks is he at? He's only at 13 checks. Okay. So, check skip is not going to happen for Narves. Uh, <laughs> so, what I would do if I was him is look for my character. And we still have a bunch of peekable checks that we have. We have um, Daryl's Tomb for Setzer, and we have Mobliz for, uh, for Terra. Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog heading back to uh, World of 
balance uh, South Figaro to go pick up all those ice shields. Uh, I probably would have bought... Oh, uh, he's going to buy another one. I probably would have bought the experience egg over the ice shield, but ice shield is definitely going to help because you can, in final Kefka, just throw those shields at Kefka and it's going to do what it's going to do. Meanwhile, White Durgan here at the Opera House. So this will be Narves' first dragon. And for Narves, he is hoping desperately for some sort of big weapon to drop here. An Illumina, a Ragnarok, something for his Terra and his Mog to do. Alright, that's an Aura Lance. That's not exactly what we want to see. I don't know if Narves picked up those Dragoon Boots in the Coliseum. One of our runners, I think, tried to. No, and that was the Brontor. That's right. <laughs> so there was there was an attempt, as, uh, you know, the memes say. Yeah, so if I'm in Narves' position, I'm going to fight dragons looking for weapons for my two party members that I'm not quite sure what to do with at the moment. Terra is is a little bit less uh less it matters a little less rather if she at least has the utility of you know those various different spells with rage plus normally her magic power is pretty decent Mog on the other hand um also has okay magic power but um you'd much rather have him doing some physical offense in this type of seed Meanwhile, that is Toronto there at Mobliz, so that's one avenue cut off for Narves' potential Kafka Tower skip. And Jesus the Frog here is looking around for his sixth character. We know that it's in Colingen with Locke, and it looks like he's going to pick him up right now as well. So interesting here, chat, that uh, both of our runners are going to unlock... Uh, go mode way before they're probably ready for uh, Kefka's tower. Jesus the Frog has slightly more levels and has, I would argue, slightly better offense. Get out of the way, guy. Holy cow. All right, Seraphim is the reward for Narves, and he looks and he sees, oh god, I gotta get three more of those. <laughs> All right, so let's see what Jesus the Frog decides to do. It looks like... Ooh. Okay. So Setzer is out of his party, and Locke is in. Which is interesting, because we know that Locke can use the Atma weapon naturally, but so can Setzer. So I was thinking he might go for a, uh, you know, Setzer, Cyan, and lock with having realm as my magic backup and it looks like narves is taking a page out of the schwantz playbook here and gonna overload party number three this will allow him to beat all of these bosses and get lots of levels but won't scale the enemies to be harder and harder right now he is at 15 checks so his enemies are level 30 plus half of 15 is eight so 38 plus another three, they're slightly over level 40, right? So he's going to get a bunch of levels and not increase the levels of his enemies, except when he takes on the dragon here on this side of the tower. Jesus the Frog looks like they are going to head into the opera dragon here to gain some more levels. So they're going to pick up uh, this aura lance here. Ooh, I didn't see that before. Terra has the Daedalos Rage, which, for those of you that don't know, is Merton. So that is why Jesus the Frog went to pick up all those ice shields. Really nice. And Quasar is available on the board for uh, Jesus the Frog. Could also use Sour Mouth against this boss. Because I believe Sour Mouth does uh, mute, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, I'm going to go look that up so I don't tell everybody the wrong thing and look like an idiot in the comments section on the YouTube video. Let's see. 
Yeah, so Lore will inflict Dark, Poison, Imp, Mute, uh, Muddle, and Sleep. Yick, that's a lot of statuses. So most dragons are susceptible to one of those statuses. Alright, so now I understand why Jesus the Frog is keeping Terra in the party. Because Terra's going to be the Merton user, so I really like this game knowledge here of using Rage to his advantage. And it's Ultros 1 at the Inferno Ambush spot here. Alright, so that's the second dragon there for Jesus the Frog. Alright, want to shout out a few people that have followed in the time that we've been doing our race here. Sir Viche. Not to be confused with uh, the terrible fish dish. Uh, <laughs> My Asmir, RP Jesus 01, uh, Alexi 022, and yep, those are some of the recent followers. Thank you so much for following. And <laughs> Ice Dragon with the triple freeze. Narvish just is not getting lucky here with these uh, these RNG spell rolls. Is gonna opt for a reset because that would that is way shorter than waiting for your characters to thaw out. Remember, no fire magic available in the seed to uh, get your characters out of the frozen state. Uh, so Jesus the Frog heading into Kafka's Tower here. I was looking at the uh, the people that recently followed, and I didn't actually see what his party configuration is if this is the full party or if this is the split party and we'll find out right here and this is the full party so Jesus the Frog doing a similar strategy to Narves here we'll get his third dragon doing this so he will get um, the auto haste for the third dragon kill we do have Golem from Mount Zozo I believe yes no? Yes. We do have Golem from Mount Sozo. So, Jesus the Frog doesn't have to worry about getting auto image for his party because he has calmness protection. Alright. Both of our runners fighting off against the Ice Dragon here. So after 49 minutes, uh, 59 minutes rather, and 45 seconds, we are fighting the same boss at the same time for just a brief second. And we'll see how fast we can DPS this down. Ooh, just another Aura Lance, unfortunately, from that dragon there. Can't really do much with that. Alright, second dragon down there for Jesus the Frog. A slightly shorter fight owed due to the fact that Terra was frozen for Narves, and I think Jesus the Frog's offense is just slightly that much better. <laughs> Commentary from the chat. PB and J would have finished by now. Spoiler alert, Drinks Glue. Come on. Alright, so both of our runners here, basically, so the strategy is, they are going to overload party number four and make their way through Kefka's Tower to clear out the Guardian spot and one of the statues at the Poltergeist spot. And this is going to be much faster to do it with a full party than with a split up party, right? Because normally when you dive into Kefka's Tower, you take your main four characters and you have to split them up three different ways. Well... At the cost of slightly more walking, right, your fights in Kefka's Tower are going to get that much faster because not only do you get to fight 
one statue boss with your full party, but when you come back into the tower later on, you get to fight the other two statues with a party of two from your main team versus a party of one from your main team. So the time that you spend uh, walking back the second time is somewhat negated by the time that you spend fighting um, or having less time fighting those bosses. And it looks like, excuse me, Jesus the Frog forgot to flip the switch here before fighting this dragon. There we go. So now he's going to be able to clear that path for party number two. Meanwhile, Narv's doing a little bit of a backwards walk through Kefka's Tower. So when you get to the position where all three of your teams are on to one switch, you could actually walk backwards and take the dragon on the other side with how Narv's has routed this. So he's going to get his auto haste from this third dragon here. And hopefully this dragon drops him a weapon he could actually use. Stop giving me these aura lances, game. There we go. That's dragon number three down for Narv's. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I had to say something, didn't I? Yet another aura lance for Narv's. Not what he was looking to find there. I mean, it's a decent stat stick for someone who wants to do your magic casting, right? Uh, and it's also decent if you had, you know, a um, a command that relied on offensive damage because it does give you plus three for both strength and magic power. But we're looking for a sword to swing. All right. Well, unfortunately, the first Kefka Tower uh, Gauntlet boss was not something that you needed to split up your party for, <laughs> as that was leader, and both of our runners are mere seconds apart here. Actually, I shouldn't even say seconds. It's more like second apart. Look at the sink. One hour and 25... One hour, four minutes and 25 minutes into the seed. Picking up that validation chest at basically the same time. Let's go. All right. So the boss at the top of the gauntlet for this full party is Doom. So this is going to be an easy one for Terra to blast down with that Daedalos Rage using Merton. Really smart heads up play here. The problem with Doom is that on the second phase, both Locke and Cyan are going to be of minimal use because he gets the image status, so those attacks will not really have a great chance of hitting. Meanwhile, heads up play here from Jesus the Frog, bouncing Flare spell off of himself in order to hit Doom. This is a way to get around the image, uh, not the image, the reflect status on Tier 2 of Doom. So Tier 2 already for Jesus the Frog. Meanwhile, Narv's dealing with a very chilly realm over there, and he will be into phase two very soon here. Oh, wind element being ineffective. So the Merton spell is a wind and fire spell. So when Doom cancels out wind, he still has fire to deal with from Merton. So if Doom cancels out both fire and wind, that is when Merton is going to be ineffective. And thankfully, Locke is able to punch through there on uh, on that try for the Atma weapon. So now the image status has been broken for Jesus the Frog. Meanwhile, Narv's here, still dealing with image, has to resort to things like Flash and GP Rain in order to get some damage here. Nice heads up play, bring Bahamut into this fight on Realm, his magic caster in order to damage down Doom. However, Jesus the Frog has already killed our statue boss here before Narv's has, so is taking the lead here by uh, 
by a few seconds. Now, let's see if Jesus the Frog saves here and peeks one of the other side statues, because that is something you can do, is peek to see what the bosses are going to be on the side, and he decides that he's going to warp out instead. So his party is now at level 40, so that's pretty decent for the statues here. Um, he is at 17 checks, same with Narv. So both runners, their enemies are the same exact levels. They're both 34 plus half of 17, which is math, math, math. So that's like 42, level 43, plus an extra three levels. So about level 46 are what these other two statue bosses are going to be. Narv's, however, is going to take the time to sneak a peek here at which one of the statues is in which spots and that is goddess there on the left hand side so now narvs knows that party number one when he sets it up for one two three will be fighting goddess party number two will be fighting poltergeist on the other side and then party number three will just get to walk right through kefka's tower All right, so Jesus the Frog is not going to look for another character for Skip. Let's see if Narvs decides to look for another character. Nope, he's heading right back in. All right, so his team looks like they're also at level 40. This is insanely close here, folks. So yeah, you could leave your, uh, your weakest character in party number three because they're just going to walk through to the save point at the very end and Narvs knows that the goddess fight is the fight that party number one takes so with goddess you want to have uh, a character that can get around love token if using physical attacks so that's why he brought both Mog and Realm over to that side because Mog and Realm have been doing most of the magic damage there and that's why he bought his Atma weapon user, Cyan, over to the Poltergeist spot. Because Poltergeist is super duper high physical defense. And the Atma weapon ignores physical defense. So that's a really nice heads up play from Narvs to rearrange his party. We'll see how Jesus the Frog manages. I think that personally he'll probably be fine. Because he does not really have to worry with so many Atma weapons and so many Atma weapon users about which is going after which. However... That love token from Goddess may be a problem for his team. So we'll see how he deals with it here. I think he also has Realm and Cyan in the third party. So maybe he's going to do like some sorcery at the switches and put all the parties in the right places. But I normally do Kefka's Tower the same way every single time. So that's why in my mind I always think party one goes towards the left side statue. Party 2 goes towards the right side statue, with Party 3 going up the middle. If you're enjoying what you're seeing, make sure you hit that follow button. Also, we have a YouTube channel, uh, so if you're watching this on YouTube, hi, I'm shouting you out. Uh, <laughs> If you're watching this on Twitch, you can go subscribe to the YouTube channel where you can watch all of the races that we have uploaded here to, uh, to Twitch. We also do post some other content there. I've done a couple of tutorial videos on that on, on the main channel as well. So if you'd like to go check that out, make sure you do. I think we're over a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I think we're up to like 1200 actually. Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog did do what I think, what I thought he was going to do, which is rearrange his party so that his two, uh, his two main parties are in the right spots. Yep, twelve hundred subs. I was correct. So thank you so much for the uh, the support over there on our YouTube channel. And while you got some time, while you're watching these runners go back through Kefka's tower here, make sure you drop them a follow. Because they are the ones putting on the show tonight. That's Jesus the Frog on Twitch and Narvs underscore four on Twitch. Alright. Jesus the Frog is going to be the first one up to fight one of the statues. And remember, he did not peek this. He has no idea which boss this is. So that saved him a little bit of time. And 
he also finished that Doom fight a little bit faster, so that's why he's slightly ahead here. And it is Spicy Chicken on the right. You know what to do if you are a sub to the Final Fantasy VI Worlds Collide Twitch channel. Alright, so it looks like what Jesus the Frog is going to do is he's going to be utilizing uh, Terra for that Ice Magic and Locke with that Atma Weapon as long as he can keep his HP up. The problem is that yeah, this is, this is where the problem comes in. Is that Poltergeist likes to use a lot of very high-powered attacks, non-elemental attacks, and basically counter-attacks almost every single move. So. Oh, this is going to hurt. Oh, boy. Yeah, so even with minus 10 magic power, Terra is doing a very respectable 5k with an ice spell. Ice is not the weakness of spicy chicken, as one might, ima one might imagine. It's actually bio or poison is the weakness of poltergeist. Yeah, believe it or not, as PB&J points out, that potion actually did save Locke's life. I was going to make a snarky comment about, you know, that 250 HP is really going to matter. But it actually does, so who am I to say? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, boy. Yeah, so unfortunately, Sour Mouth does not actually inflict the stop status, which is the weakness of Poltergeist here. And, whew. Coming out with another fractional HP cast. So Jesus the Frog is hanging on by a thread here. Does have an ice shield on Terra to negate this Flare Star. Poltergeist has a little bit more than 40,000 HP at, at the highest level, the max level of 50. We're at level like 45 here. So he's going to have a little bit less than 40. And there it is. Jesus the Frog getting it done. 8 HP and a dream on lock. Really nicely done. Get out your sleeping bags after that one, folks. Meanwhile, Narves is going to fight up against the spicy chicken here. Has Terra doing also about 5k a pop with that ice spell. And is using Cyan with the Atma weapon. Yeah, so I would have thought that if Jesus the Frog did peek the statues, he probably would have put Terra on the other side having access to Merton, because Merton does absolutely nothing against Poltergeist. I will never talk bad about a potion ever again. And that includes the Ultra Sleek potion. Alright. Jesus the Frog in his last fight before Final Kefka. It is Goddess, and unfortunately, first turn love token is not what you want to see there. Poltergeist down for Narves, though. That was a significantly faster fight than Jesus the Frog. However, it doesn't really matter that much because he's still behind. Get up on that save point and get your sleeping bags out. Jesus the Frog pivoting off of the Atma weapon, which is doing about 7.5k a, a pop, to GP Rain, which is only doing 2,500, but that's what happens when you proc Goddess's Love Token. All right, and there is Goddess down for Jesus the Frog. All right, Narv's stepping up to the plate against Goddess here. He's got to hurry up. Jesus the Frog, I think, also has the advantage in that he has Golem from uh, Mount Zozo, which is Calmness Protection. Whereas Narves does have Phantom as Calmness Protection, but that is slightly iffier. I don't think either one of our runners found Mute or Siren, and I don't know what our status on Instant Death is. So I did see Shote, but no Raiden or Odin. So this final fight will be interesting, folks.
Narv's using the non-elemental Quasar attack here against Goddess. Goddess does absorb Lightning and Pearl, neither of which we've got, so this is a relatively decent fight here. Use the Frog, meanwhile, stepping on the switches for final Kefka. All right. Got us down. Four Narves, but is it going to be enough to get him back into this fight? As he's got to go now pick Locke back up, I think. Yeah, PB&J points out, we didn't really get much in terms of offense. Atma Weapons, Quasar, Ice 3. Not exactly how you draw up the uh, a Doom's Rage situation, but Jesus the Frog up to final Kefka. I think he'll do it in maybe 8 minutes and 49 seconds. So he's going to start off at 117.45. Get your predictions in chat. 8.47 is what I got. What do you have, chat? All right, so Jesus the Frog going to go ahead and uh, use Flare because the head is actually weak to fire and we don't have any fire magic in the seed other than the Merton that uh, Terra is rocking. And we do have X-Zone, so we do have some instant death here. Quarter coming out and hitting, so that's nice heads up play. Quarter can hit that long arm for a quad nine damage roll because uh, it sets the HP of the target down to a quarter of what their max is, but the spell damage cap is quad nines, so that is what you'll do. You could actually do quarter twice, two long arm for two quad nine damages before it's like seven and change on the third one. So just an interesting thing for those of you out there wondering what can I do if I don't have instant death? That is certainly something you can do. And it looks like head is already down from that combination of uh, flare and atma weapons. But flare is the slowest spell in the game. So he's given back time to Narves here. Who is going to head up to final Kefka at 1 minute and 30 seconds behind. So we've got a nail biter here folks. You may have paid for the whole seat. But you only need the edge as we head into final Kefka. All right, opening X zone here for Narves. And it does connect. So took care of Longarm much faster than Jesus the Frog. And Jesus the Frog having some trouble with keeping Terra alive here. Remember, Terra was the one using the Merton Rage. And tier one is all physical attacks. So this is basically the armor check of final Kefka. And I don't know what Terra is rocking, but it certainly was not enough to keep her up the first two turns. And that balled up fist usually counterattacks every single turn. So we might want to skip Terra actually taking a turn here. Nope, we are going to take the turn and Terra goes down again! Thankfully, Jesus the Frog did not queue up another attack here. Is able to pick up Terra, but watch out now. Narves coming up here and only has balled up fist left to go. Nice use of the Pearl Wind lore there from Locke in order to get Terra's HP back up. I think that's the wrong rage for uh, for Narves. You don't want to do disaster. <laughs> and there it is. Jesus the Frog out of Tier 1 first. Meanwhile, that is Narves down with tier one as well making up a lot of time on that first tier so i think there's maybe about a 15 second or so lead so it was a minute and 30 coming into this fight and narves has cut that almost down to nothing yeah taking a look at the time it's about a 10 to 15 second difference now so Tiger is weak to ice, and since we have ice 3, we're going to blast down Tiger. 
The annoying thing in this phase is going to be magic. What is magic going to do to our party? As Tools goes away with X-Zone, a uh, hit probably won't be much of a problem until his death counter, but magic is going to be the one that's going to keep us up at night here. So magic is going to decide the fate of this race. If magic behaves, then uh, he'll be okay. Our runners do have uh, Reflect on their parties, which does help a lot. However, Magic can still waste a lot of time with his casts. And thankfully, Muddle does not go through Reflect. Otherwise, this could be ridiculous. Alright, so here comes our first cast of Quarter. So we'll see if that means that Magic is dead for uh, Jesus the Frog. Alright, out comes 10 hits here. For Narv's aside, so I think he only has magic left. Jesus the Frog, meanwhile, getting a triple quarter! Oh no! Meanwhile, Realm goes down for Narv's. He's got to pick Realm back up here. And then is going to use the Starlet Esper Summon for healing. Great heads up play for Narv. So an Esper Summon will actually let you heal. So really good uh, knowledge from both of our runners on how to get around the Reflect to heal your party. Using the Pearl Wind Lore and using the Starlet Esper Summon. Alright, so I think the only thing we... Nope, we still have magic left for Jesus the Frog here. And Jesus is going to burn through his Mega Elixir. I think he's got more than one of them, because remember, he did take down Magimaster early on in the seed here. And I think it's only hit left for Jesus the Frog. Meanwhile, magic is the only thing left for Narves. And here comes Dispel. Does this mean the end for magic no i think it's going to be one more turn for narves there for that almost quad nines damage meanwhile 10 hits coming out for jesus the frog and that is narves taking the slight lead here over jesus the frog in tier two holy cow this is getting close <laughs> well not getting close it's still close All right, tier three. We do have Golem for Jesus the Frog, and we have Phantom for Narves. So that is our calmness protection. So keep that in mind, folks, because Jesus the Frog will have an easier time, I think, keeping his party here in tier three. And tier three opens with a banger with a double kill on Realm and Terra. Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog also has to survive the opening Merton. However, he's got ice shields all around, so his party is unaffected by it here. Meanwhile, this should do it for Girl here. One Atma weapon and one flare. Narves, on the other hand, is going to take Bahamut into this fight, so that is going to do some non-elemental damage to Girl there. Girl can uh, revive and heal both parts of the boss, so we want to take it down first. And now Narves has to play Recovery, while Jesus the Frog can play Let's Pump Out as much damage as we possibly can. He's got Golem up, and he should be counting into Meteo phase now, so he's got to be careful and hope that he doesn't get a double Meteo as Terra is down into critical levels of HP. Ice 3 coming out for Realm. This is going to do quad 9, so I think this is going to be the calmness, and Golem is going to block it there. Not once, but twice. And Jesus the Frog takes the lead back again from Narves on Tier 3, who just had a disaster with Sleep and two of his characters dying. However, it's not over yet, folks, because Jesus the Frog's... Terra and Realm are at pretty low levels of HP here. And Final Kefka is known to counter with some nasty spells. Out comes Merton, and down will go Terra and Realm again for Narves. Meanwhile, Jesus the Frog facing off against Final Kefka here. 
has 60,000 HP and has a bunch of ice shields. So not going to be using that uh, Merton Rage anymore. Just going to be damaging down with ice three and then throwing ice shields when we get into the goner phase of this attack here. Out comes Meteo and Terra goes down once again. Can we get Realm back or can we get Terra back on our feet? Fallen one coming out on uh, Jesus of Frog's side. So he's going to use that second Mega Elixir. Remember he had one from beating Magimaster and one from a dead check somewhere. So excellent heads up play. Refilling the MP for his casters as well. But now he has to be careful because now he's in counter attack phase. As oh no 9300 damage was not enough to kill Sleep there. So we get a train and then a Meteo. Oh my goodness, Terra down again, and unfortunately Dark means that Cyan can't hit anything. However, it's an Ultima counter out from Kefka. We've got triple digit HPs there on the party, and here comes the Ice Shield. I think this is going to do it for Jesus the Frog with the Quad Nines. That is the Crack Pow, the Boom Shakalaka, the Nuff Nuff Jigglypuff. 127.48 is his final time, so he is our winner of uh, the seed here and evens the series up at one game apiece. Narv's unfortunately losing both Terra and Realm on tier three to Calmness. So he'll be able to get this final Kefka fight done. Um, so Narv's can finish this out as quick as he possibly can because right now after the first uh, round uh, Overswarm beat Green Monkey by 10 minutes and 33 seconds. So, if Narvs can do this fight relatively quickly, then he will keep his team in the lead by margin of victory. But it all comes down to that matchup on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time that will be on uh, one of the Speed Gaming channels. So, stay tuned in our Discord if you would like to know when exactly or where exactly that matchup will take place. All right, little heel from the dancing Setzer. You love to see it. It wasn't really a, a big heel, but when you have to come off the bench with somebody, you might as well get some work done. And speaking of getting work done, we are joined by our winner of tonight's race, Jesus the Frog. Congratulations on uh, getting your team back in this best of three series. GG's to you, good sir. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your approach to a Doom's Rage flag set and how, in this flag set, you didn't get any fun weapons to use except towards the end of the seed. Yeah, well, that was my usual strategy in Doom, is loot a lot early, take a fight or two to get off level 3, don't sell anything at the Colosseum, try to grab something like Illumina or whatever for the Colosseum. Then, once I have some good offense, bump up scaling as much as I can, and take dragons early to your weapons. None of that worked this time. <laughs> Alright, Narvs is just going to go for it here between Mog and Cyan. So this is either going to be a goner wipe, or this is going to be a GG. So let's Definitely see what worry. happens. Oh, this is going to be a goner wipe. Oh. Ugh. You hate to see it. That is rough. I almost I had a very strong worry because I had queued up all my attacks and then he Ultima countered. And I was like, oh, I have an attack queued, but it's the Ice Shield, so that should kill. Yes. So I was a bit worried there that I just got myself double Ultima and wiped out, but, but it worked out. Yeah, so Narvs, knowing that he's lost the race, is going to take the, uh, the DNF, the FF there, because in the bracket round, the margin of victory doesn't really matter it just matters who wins the matches quite an unfortunate end for what was an insane race so we'll drag narvs in here uh narvs sorry to see that unfortunate outcome there uh tier three of kefka really really did you in there yeah yeah i did i i didn't expect this to be a doom seed of magic casting <laughs> where were my where was my weapons i couldn't find any well, you had Ice 3. That's all you needed. 
I thought so, but uh, not not when I kept catching Metron over and over again, and I couldn't keep my party members alive on T3. You didn't have uh, Metron protection? Nope. I never saw so, anything. Well, I had Rage Ring and a Blizzard Orb. I guess I should have kept on, but I didn't think about it. There were Rage Rings for sale. One was in Narsh um, Chest at the beginning, and those could be worn by Cyan and Locke. There were Ice Shields for sale in South Figaro. Um, and also, I did the pug fight, and I managed to win two Minervas, which I threw <laughs> on Cyan and Terra. So I was, I was well protected from Rattan. Yeah, it was pretty All ridiculous, right. actually. Um, I'm surprised, Jesus, that you didn't buy that experience egg that you found in the World of Ru- uh, World of Balance to Zen Relic Shop early when you had that Atma weapon. I guess you were saving up for uh, a Colosseum play and just never made yeah. your way back there. I would have had to have sold one of my Minervas to buy it. And I almost went back and I got the second Minerva, but then I found I could have both people wearing it. And usually in Doom Seeds, you get you give him tons of weapons, but you have to go buy defense because you're not giving yep. any defense. So I really, really didn't want to sell Minerva. That turns out I found two Force Shields, Force Armor, Crystal Mail. <laughs> So I probably could have sold it to pick up the experience egg, but by the time I could afford it, I was like, well, I could buy an experience egg on level 30, and I need two more checks into Kefix Tower. Or I could buy two ice shields, and then have full protection from Rattan, and can break shields on Falkefia. So I decided at that point, it was better to buy the shields. Yeah, I agree. It was definitely way better to buy the shields late. So, Narvs, I was asking Jesus the Frog before about general strategy with Doom's flag sets, and it sounds like you know, you had a very, you guys had very similar strategies of let's get some levels. Let's see if there's anything in the Coliseum. Spoiler alert, there wasn't in this flag set. Um, so tell us where you basically went from there with your, uh, with your play. Uh, yeah. So my first check since no offense physically much, no good abilities from either character. I mean, GP reigns. Okay. To start. Um, I, I went for realms, um, the uh, the painting the Ozar is that what his name is? Ozar, yeah. Ozar, Ozar. Uh, yeah, because there's a few fixed fights there. I thought, all right, we'll try getting some levels there. Um, second fight was something I didn't think I could even pretend to handle when I did a um, <laughs> bolt edge. I'm like, nope, I'm out. Let's go try that, something else. That Inok Fortis fight. So Jesus the Frog did push through that fight, and you want to tell him Jesus what the boss was at the end of uh, Ozar's mansion? Oh yeah. So after I checked the the painting for the grind fight. And found that it was the Spitfire and the four uh, little dudes. What are they called? The uh, Hitman. That's right. And then I found the next fight by the uh, required painting, which is that Enoch Fortis, which is tough, but I at that point could get through it with uh, with GP Rain and a sketch. Throwing then I ran at the into <laughs> at the bo- exactly in the boss. I ran to Magic Master. Oh, unfortunately, I, I broke a fire rod, and it was three GP Rains. But I he t- killed uh, Realm. I didn't have any Phoenix Downs. I never found them yet. So I had to just throw one last GP array and take him out for a solo kill. But frankly, I'm really glad I leveled. I was at level 19 at that point. Mm-hmm. I had taken a grind fight outside of uh, World of Runes at Figaro. And then I took of those fights in Ozer's Mansion. And I feel like I took a fight somewhere else too. So I was I was well ahead of scaling. That's the only thing that saved me there. Yeah, I think that was because you had wanted to go into the Coliseum, right, to uh, to yeah, potentially exactly. get some stuff. So both of you ended up doing the same strategy for Kefka's Tower, and we'll ask you first, Jesus. Um, your full party on the right to clear the middle path, take on a dragon there, and then save it for the, um, the two side statues. Uh, was that just a... Uh, did you do that strategy because of how underleveled you were by the time you got to Kefka unlock requirements? Pretty much, yeah. I got unlock. I'm like, okay, I'm level 31. My offense is Ice 3, Murton Rage, and two single Atmas. No Genji Love, no uh, no offering. So if I do a 1-1-2 one, one, split, I have the wrong character against Poltergeist. Like if it's solo Terra, I'm dead. I can't do it. If it's solo lock, it's really hard because I'm not doing that much per space, like 3,000 to swing. He has 36,000 health for the scaling. So I knew I could not reliably take the parties. I had to get Poltergeist on my two-man. 
and then get lucky on the doom and goddess for the other two too i'm like nope not doing it i'm taking dragons i'm getting some levels and i'm gonna split go full right and then two and two yeah i'm surprised you didn't try and take a peek of the statues before warping out i think your your merton user Terra would have been way better over against uh yes goddess yes. and poltergeist and for sure i just forgot I was going to do it, and then I got there, I defeated the guy, I'm like, cool, and I worked out, and wait, I didn't even save afterward, <laughs> so I'm not going back in. Yep, that's it. You gotta, you, at that point, you just gotta do what you gotta do, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I yeah, think... So, Nara, well, same I... question, you know, you you were also pretty underleveled, and you also only had, you had zero dragons at that point as well, so I, I think yours was a combination of get levels and get my my stuff from the dragons. Yeah, well, one thing I can tell you I regret, I must have seen those ice shields that he bought, and I did not buy them or remember that they were there. That was a huge, huge miss. Yeah. But yeah, I think when I had completed to go to Kefka, I think I was level 27s. Yeah, it was, I think it was, it was about very my, it was, low. <laughs> it was very low. So I was like, all right, well, we'll just hit Dragon Opera House. If we hit the two dragons inside Kefka's tower, nonetheless, I was hoping for some physical offense, Illuminas, Ragnaroks, you know, VKs that you often see in this seed. Yeah. Instead of just Aurora Lance after Aurora Lance after Aurora Lance. I think I got three Aurora Lances and a Mega Elixir from Dead Checks. No, one Emma, two Aurora Lances, one Mega Elixir from Dead Checks and Dragons. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if I even got a Dead Check this whole run. I'm trying to remember. I got one Dead Check. It was, it was Ozard Mansion. It was dead with Emma. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't finish that one. Yeah, that's why we so low leveled. Everything just was laid out. I last locationed Monk. Uh, and then, of course, I led two characters at Lone Wolf and Kefka and Nersh. Yep. Back to yeah, yeah so I thought about... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was thinking, he's mentioned about having the Mega Elixir. There was two Mega Elixirs we knew of. One for um, Locke's secondary, and one for um, Lone Wolf's secondary. And I thought about going to grab those. Mm -hmm. And I probably should have, and I think that might have saved me this run here. But so it was I like, you know, the, all the dead checks were, were Mega Elixirs or Aurora Lance. It's true. I didn't uh, check Locke's weapon shop because he was my go mode. And at that point, like, well, I could check, but it's only going to increase scaling. I'd rather take a boss, a statue boss of like 15 or 16, then push it to 19 and have a much harder time. But I got a Mega Lexer from Badger Master, of course, and then one from the uh, Mount Zozo dragon. And I saw the one at uh, Lone Wolf Secondary, but then I was like, well, I have two. Whatever. Yeah. So question for both of you and we'll start with narves were you considering with a seven character skip perhaps doing some some peekable checks like maybe a daryl's tomb or i know jesus peaked mobiles but mobiles for your your seventh character or were you not trying to play games and you were just thinking i just need levels and then i can just go do this um, I, I thought about skip. I just didn't, wasn't sure if I could find one that was quick enough to make up the time it would be to do the skip. Mm -hmm. I knew for sure being under leveled, I just needed the dragons. And I knew if I could just take on one statue with the full party, you know, I could just help ease off the, you know, the troubles of the other sides. Um, no, I guess in this case, the other skip was the 21 checks. Yeah. And I think I was like six off. Well, yeah. three off, maybe by the time I got dragons, three or four off. Yeah, I was like, I well, both of you ended that wasn't with, an option. Yeah, both of you ended with 17 checks and did several dragons in, you know, as part of the run up to the final boss. So definitely 21 was not happening unless you went out of your way to do way more checks. So um, yeah, I unlocked at 15. I'm like, I'm not getting a skip. I get, that's why I peaked to try to find two characters over the one. But the other checks were Daryl's Tomb, uh, Maduin, you know, Seal Gate, Late River. I'm not going to do those no. in case it's character. If it was a guaranteed progression place, I might peek it. I might check it anyway, just in case, but none are guaranteed. Uh, so it could just be another Aura Lance. And yeah, even with two dragons, three dragons between Colosseum and Ephraim's Tower, I'm still three short. Where am I going to find three more bosses, three more checks to do? Yeah, I mean, I guess you could do behind Welk and Moogle Room, and that's too real fast, but still. I could pop up and take you... the Nourish Dragon and Tritok, but at that point, yeah. I'm spending like six, seven minutes to get the skip, and I'll say be three. Well, not only that, if you're doing the, the free checks, you're also making your bosses in... Kafka's tower harder. I know Jesus yeah. was it you that barely got by the the poltergeist fight. I think you had to save your. Uh, <laughs> you used a potion on your lock, and I'm, I was like, "Well, that potion's not going to help." And turns out it did because Lock had eight HP at the end of the fight. 
Was that your yeah, fight? Yeah. Okay, that was your fight. <laughs> uh, that was it was rough. Um, that Poltergeist fight was the worst matchup. It's one place I didn't want to see Poltergeist was against that party. But uh, yeah, it was the only saving grace was he shrapneled early. At the end, he cast all elemental spells that I could absorb or negate. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right, I think I'm out of questions. So both of your teams now have one game apiece. So it will be up to Lunar Chimera or Fly Eagles Fly doing the Goddess's Edict flag set. That's going to be Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time on one of our speed gaming channels. Check out the rubber match between your two teams uh, going into uh, the next round there. So that that is what is on the line. So we'll first go with uh, our our winner tonight, Jesus the Frog. You got any other uh, final thoughts before we get out of here? I just have a final question. Sure. On tier one. Yep. Tara got punched a bunch, and she was like 600 HP. So I'm like, okay, I'll, use, yep. <laughs> I'll use an X potion. I used an X potion on her, and she died. Yep. I just miss an attack. Like, did I not see an attack, or what happened there? Um. So the X potion that you would have used goes away. I think what happened was the balled up fist can counter any party member. Like, you attack it, and it does a counterattack against anybody, and then also takes its turn. So I think she yeah. just got hit twice in a row, and that okay, was the so end I of didn't that. see an attack come out, but I guess it might have been a double punch by the uh, by the short arm there. Yep, yeah, that I think right, is what sense. happened. Because blinked and you yeah. missed it, and she was... Well, Tara was getting bullied on both sides of the <laughs> final Kefka fight for, uh, for both of you guys. Yeah, so I guess the only thing I have left then is... Uh, it, was, it was a good race. It was a close one. I did not expect to actually beat Nars, um, and, but GG, man, that was that was fun. It was great. Yep. Yeah. Thanks for uh, restreaming this. Yeah, definitely watch this one back. It is it is a heck of a heck of a run there. Um, Narves, any other uh, final thoughts before we we let you go and get out of here? Nope. Nope. This was great. This is a good run. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for volunteering to be broadcast. We cannot have the races without the runners. And both of you put on an amazing show for our audience tonight. So big ups to the two of you. Really appreciate it. And again, we are going to see whatever the rubber match is between your two teams on Thursday. We've got plenty of other awesome warring triads action for you coming up. Uh, tomorrow, I believe we are going to be doing a special multi-world stream so we are going to be doing a multi-world marathon on march the 16th that's a saturday at 12 p.m eastern noon time it is a 2v2 co-op multi-world race for multi-thon so we are going to be doing sort of a dry run of that maybe tomorrow at 7 eastern here on our twitch channel and we also are involved with Randothon 2024 to benefit NAMI on Friday, March the 29th at 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time. So that'll be a normal uh, sort of race with a few fun incentives like uh, do you get uh, a auto berserk status maybe? Um, do the statues become shuffled? Do you have to do the... Uh, save or kill Sid in order to unlock Final Kafka. So those will be some of the bid wars which will be available for that marathon as well. So I think that's it. Again, thank you guys so much for, for racing. This is a really fun one to watch. And we'll catch everybody on the next one. Peace out. Bye.